back with us now from House Armed Services. He's Congressman Austin Scott and former White House Council of Economic Advisors, Chairman Thomas Phillipson. Congressman, first, your reaction to Edward Lawrence's report there, Democrats want to tax oil companies even more? Man, Liz, you know, you just can't make this stuff up. Uh, well, I, I guess you can, but you know, there are two things Americans don't want to be uh, dependent on uh, foreign sources for, and one of them is energy and the other one's food, and the Democrats are taking us right down that path. And, you know, this is a, this is a proposal that I hope they'll put on the floor and and then they'll lose even more seats in, in, in November. You know, to the congressman's point, Thomas, you know, uh, Democrats are for forecast to lose Congress. They have no answer to inflation. And the big warning to Democrats from Democrat Representative Sean Maloney at their meeting this weekend, he runs a Democrat Congressional Campaign Committee, Thomas. He told Democrats, we are the problem. We're out of touch with voters. And it's striking that the UAE and Saudi Arabia will not pick up the phone when the president calls. What do you think, Thomas? Yeah, I think the Democrats are keeping on to blame the private sector or companies for problems with their policies. So if you take energy prices, it's not only energy policy of going after, you know, a war on U.S. fossil fuels, but also it's our foreign policy. We had Russian invasions under both Obama and Biden, but not under Trump for good reasons. And so it's not only a failure in energy policy that's driving this, it's a failure in foreign policy. And they keep blaming the industry or the private sector. Same with, we have 75% of industries for having price hikes, and that's competitive industries. You can't raise prices in competitive industries because industries you lose to your customers, essentially. So bottom line is, this is a policy-induced, these are policy-induced price increases we see, whether in energy or generally. Yeah. Uh, but Democrats are blaming the private sector for it, essentially. Yeah, to Thomas's point, also new polls, Congressman, show Hispanics and blacks are going to the GOP. Inflation's on the mind of every American family now, but the Democrats are focused on climate, the climate agenda. It's not a good look when inflation started to rise almost exactly when Biden came into the White House. Even the former Obama Treasury Secretary, Larry Summers, warns inflation is going to continue for the next year or two. Liz, if you get up in the morning and you go to work, you know good and well these democratic policies are not working for you. And so I think that when November rolls around, Americans are going to walk into the polls and they're going to say enough's enough and they're going to create balance by giving Republicans control of both the House and the Senate. And then Biden is going to have to do something that he hasn't done and he hasn't had his hand called on, and that's actually sit down with the Republicans and negotiate with them. Liz, I only know one Republican in the House of Representatives outside of Republican leadership that's actually met with uh, President Biden, that's not the way it's supposed to work. That's not what he promised. But this is the most partisan president that we've had in a long, long yeah. time in this country, maybe ever. And Congressman Darrell Issa is saying he's attended 17 states of the union addresses, Thomas, and you usually see action after those addresses, not anything out of the White House on this. You know, we're going to watch Democrats say that the answer to rising gas and even dictators like Putin, or the answer is electric cars. Watch this. Today, the average gas price in America hit an all-time record high of over $4 per gallon. I'm willing to pay $4 a gallon. Hell, I'll pay $15 a gallon because I drive a Tesla. Perhaps if you let the market work in this respect, people will feel pain. They'll take a second look at that Ford F-450 gigantoid truck. They'll reconsider a Tesla. You'll see hybrid innovation. I'm happy to be standing here sandwiched between um, our two electric vehicles. Uh, Secretary Buttigieg and I both have two of the electric vehicles. We have to move to clean energy solutions. Clean is in the end where we should be so that we don't find ourselves in this position again. That's it. And there's no sound or fume. There, there is nothing. And so how do I know it's actually working? It oh. is. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, electric cars cost $60,000, right? That's a lot of money. That's sticker shock alone for that, right, Thomas? I mean, and also this, Nancy Pelosi claims government spending is reducing the national debt. It's not inflationary. The government poured $6 trillion into the economy. Federal Reserve's been pouring money in. And now the answer is to buy electric cars. When those electric cars, they're fueled by oil and gas. Two-thirds of U.S. electricity comes from fossil fuels, Thomas. Yeah, I think the, the issue here is obviously that greener energy is costlier. If it wasn't, the private market would, you know, root out uh, fossil fuels faster than any government could. The problem with the Democrats' policies are with clamping down with taxes, et cetera, on the oil company, 
is that not, not only are they making energy more costly for U.S. customers, they're at the same time increasing global warming because they're substituting, you know, very clean fossil fuel in the U.S. relative to foreign fossil fuel, which is, which is much browner. So they're basically self-defeating in their own goal of trying to reduce global warming because they're making, making energy costlier here and we have more global warming, warming as a consequence. Yeah, to Thomas's point, Congressman, you're in D.C. from where you sit. Are Democrats open to hearing what the analysis like Thomas just delivered about how what they're pushing for is causing more global warming? Do, or, or are they just so intolerant they're just not listening to anything and just railroading the country along? No, they're not going to listen to the common sense or the facts. I mean, and Thomas is exactly right with what he's saying. I mean, the fact of the matter is, you know, when you raise the cost of energy inside the U.S., when you do things like canceling the Keystone Pipeline, what you do is you force manufacturing outside of the U.S. into areas where they have no environmental standards whatsoever. And so when you talk about the batteries for the vehicles that they want to move us all to, you know, the fact of the matter is the raw materials, the raw materials that it takes to manufacture those batteries are in short supply. It, it's simply not possible Got it. to do what they're demanding be done right now. Congressman Scott and Thomas Phillipson, great interview. Thanks for joining us. You'll come back soon.